Uh, so FIFA 18, the game that will be memorable to absolutely no one. Um, as it's September, and obviously FIFA 19 will come out at the end of this month, I thought we'd take one final look at last year's game and give it a send off that I don't, depending on how this goes, it either deserves or it doesn't, as well as sort of a final review. Now it's been out for 12 months, we will know what this game will be remembered for and uh, we would know how to think about this game for the future. Obviously, I'm pretty sure for most of us it won't touch uh, our top four or five. For me, FIFA 6, FIFA, actually any FIFA through to FIFA 10, FIFA 6, FIFA 10, FIFA 12, FIFA 13, those were iconic FIFAs to me and this game comes absolutely nowhere fucking near them. Um, similar to FIFA 17, 16. Um, FIFA 18 very much follows that trend, and by the looks of it, FIFA 19 is as well. But anyway, I thought with this video we'll look at uh, we'll look at multiple areas of the game, multiple game modes. We'll review them. We'll look at what they did, and basically, like I say, give them the last sort of little review going into FIFA 19. And overall, we we'll send this game into the grave that so many already did in December, November, October last year. So uh, yeah. Sit back and relax. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, and we'll start with everyone's favourite game mode, their journey. Said absolutely no one ever. So obviously the journey picked off in FIFA 18, where it left off on FIFA 17 with Alex Hunter after you broke through with a Premier League club. And uh, the premise of FIFA 18 was having broken through, you're now getting noticed essentially, and uh, you get. Your agent, who seems incredibly incompetent at his job, thinks Real Madrid are interested, they're not, um, and then his career goes down a shower of shit for six months where he has to play in America, poor sod. Um, and then out of nowhere you ended up, ended up, seriously, you end up at a European club, you get injured, so that gives you an ex excuse to care about Danny Williams or whatever his name is, and then... You, I can't even really remember how it ends, to be honest. Oh, you're in the diner, aren't you? And then that woman calls. And that sets you up for Real Madrid. Simple as that. Now, to be honest with you, I understand what they're going for. Um, obviously, they've been going for all this idea of this following this prodigy and how it all comes to be and the life of a young footballer when they are sort of thrusted into the limelight, similar to what Marcus Rashford has most recently. Probably the best example. Um... However, I still can't help but feel the story is incredibly re re unrealistic. Um, first things first, FIFA 17, Harry Kane would never sign for Crystal Palace. For example, what I, the team I picked in the journey was Crystal Palace. Um, obviously, you could pick any of the 20 teams. I think realistically, the story should have been that you're in a bigger club and you broke through in a bigger club because one, that's harder, and two, that makes the rest of the story more realistic, in my opinion. Um, Obviously, if you're picking Bournemouth, Palace, Watford, West Ham, teams like this, and you're signing Harry Kane in January, well, that's unrealistic. And as for Harry Kane, by the end of by the start of FIFA 18, where is he? He just disappears. It's almost like he's not needed for the plot anymore. Hmm. Glaring error that. Um, also, there's a lot of foreshadowing, um, which I only actually realised having played it for a second time. Um, Obviously, you've got the whole Real Madrid friendly, and it's like, oh, Real Madrid would do great for, would do great to have you, says Ronaldo. Oh, oh, that's not that's not hinting at a next plot, is it? Oh, look what they're doing in FIFA 19. Oh, he's going to Real Madrid. That was never going to happen. I'm so shocked. And then there's also, of course, you end up playing LA Galaxy, and it's like you get to mock, mock the MLS essentially if you want to. And uh, what goes and happens in a month? You're desperate, and you need the MLS. Another area that is incredibly unrealistic in my book is when you think about it right, this guy has had two full seasons in football now at the end of FIFA 18. He's played at Crystal Palace, he's gone on loan to Newcastle, Aston Villa or Norwich, depending on who you picked. Obviously Crystal Palace for me, I have to keep saying that. He's, he's then moved to LA, six, four, months late, four or five months later, he's moved to Bayern Munich or PSG or Atletico. And then six months after that he's gone to Real Madrid, very realistic. In three years he's moved more than I have in my entire life in, in just general living. Um, which 
again, isn't very realistic. And I, I do get what they're going for. Maybe realism isn't important to them. And, and to an extent, I agree with that. Obviously, the game has to be fun, it has to be enjoyable, and people have to be interested, and the narrative has to keep moving for people to stay interested. But at the same time, they're trying to tell a realistic story of what happens when a youngster is thrown up into the limelight, and I just don't feel they've done that justice particularly. Um, obviously, in my opinion, especially with FIFA 18 and now FIFA 19, there's a lot of product placement in terms of you can tell that certain clubs have paid a lot, a lot of dollar, I imagine, to be involved in the journey. LA Galaxy is a prime example. Even before you move to LA, there's a lot of them involved. And I imagine it's very similar for Real Madrid now. I also do like the, <laughs> I do like the thought of the FIFA 19 journey. The fact they've probably moved to, into Real Madrid to, be, to start this partnership with Ronaldo. And then Ronaldo goes and throws a spanner and works by leaving. And... Um, if that is the case, that worries me for the journey in FIFA 19 because they might have had to change a lot of it very short notice and that's just going to make it even more rushed. Overall, I'd say, was the journey better this time? Slightly. I think the story was a little bit more personal. As much as I do feel like it was unrealistic, you got to meet more of the family, obviously you had the whole sister thing. And if you're looking for a narrative and looking to get interest in these characters, I feel like... I feel like they've done that better in FIFA 18 than they did in FIFA 17. Obviously, you've got more customization and things like that, and more options and like that. You, and yes, that's an improvement on FIFA 17. But it's still very much not worth the time for me. I think I'll play for it on FIFA 19, as I did in FIFA 18, FIFA 17. Um, will I enjoy some of it? Maybe. However, if it wasn't in the game, would I really care? I would not give a rat's ass if it wasn't in the game. And when you think that this this mode has been brought in, and it's it's probably a large reason of why career mode hasn't been that touched in the last few years, pro clubs haven't been touched at all in the last few years. Even things like ultimate team this year isn't getting touched. It's probably because of things like the journey. And is it worth it? I don't think it is in any shape of the imagination. Um, to think that this is the primary single player mode, I think it's just it's just a bit of a it's just a bit weird. It's very weird that they put so much effort into this when, realistically, I really feel like not many people care about the journey. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, though. I mean, maybe I'm talking shit, but I feel like I'm not. And I feel like a lot of people will agree with me that the journey is a little bit unnecessary. Let's so now move to the most popular mode, another mode that takes the limelight from others in the form of Ultimate Team. Now obviously Ultimate Team is incredibly popular and has been for years. I will stress this right now, I don't play very much Ultimate Team at all. FIFA Team is probably the most I've played Ultimate Team ever. However, that's still only enough for about, well as you can see my record, it's very limited. There's not many games played on Ultimate Team. I just have never felt the appeal in it. It's never really appealed to me. So I just thought I'd stress that I'm not the best person to potentially ask about Ultimate Team. However, I did play it enough, and one the one thing that was new in FIFA 18 that I really did enjoy was squad battles, which obviously let you uh, go up against some squads, single player. Um, so for people that played single player, it was always a it was a, it was a good new addition, and it would essentially you'd aim to get a rank having played the played the squads that you got to play in a week, and you'd earn, earn rewards. And I did enjoy that, I did enjoy that. There was a spell where I always used to play it for a few weeks, but it didn't last too long. Um, and yeah, it, Ultimate Team, I just, it's never, appealed, like I said, it's never really appealed to me, but that mode was a good addition, certainly for single player players, in my opinion. Um, obviously, you still have things like Draft, which I've always liked Draft since it was added in FIFA 16. Um, but again, it just never it's never appealed to me and it's already I feel like the people that love it will will keep loving it as it is. I don't think there's a major need for Ultimate Team to have a lot of changes at this moment in time. Um which kinda makes sense with FIFA nineteen not really doing anything to Ultimate Team, I don't think. I haven't seen much anyway. Obviously there's new legends and things like that, or icons or whatever the shit they're called now. Um but yeah, Ultimate Team, it just, it just does what it does best, and the people that enjoy it will continue to enjoy it. Um, like I say, for me, it's never, I've never appealed to it. 
I feel like there is an element of pay to win, which obviously isn't completely true. But I feel like this, the, this discussion always follows whenever there's microtransactions involved. For me, it is very, it feels very difficult, and it feels like a massive grind to build up an, an ultimate team without buying FIFA points. I think getting coins takes forever, and then if you're spending coins on packs, packs are incredibly um, well lucky dip, really, aren't they? And they they feel quite often like they're always against you, and the, the chances of you getting something good with coins just doesn't feel that high. Whereas you can just go and buy a load of FIFA points, buy a load of packs, buy a number of packs that would take you weeks to to earn in coins. Um, and I've just never had the time to sit there and play Ultimate Team, to be honest. Um, like I say, if I'll give it a go on FIFA 19. Um, if squad, well, squad battles will still be there, things like draft will still be there, and every now and then I like playing them. But for me, on FIFA 18, Ultimate Team was very much nothing important and uh, this kind of brings this kind of goes towards the issue that people that like career mode and pro clubs have really had um, especially for people like me where ultimate team doesn't have any appeal to me they put all their eggs in the baskets of the journey and ultimate team and if you don't care about those two modes you've really been left like just to fend off the scraps haven't you um, and I feel like that will probably only continue, but I do think that they're going to stop working on Ultimate Team for at least a year or so, because I, I genuinely think they've got a good, they've probably got a good mode there, and I don't think that there's much that they can they need to do. Obviously, in terms of refining it and making it a good user experience is probably the main thing, which actually points more towards EA servers than anything. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what I can really say on Ultimate Team. There's, like I said, I'm not the best person to talk about it. Um, I'm sure there'll be people that are much better at it, uh, you know, much more knowledgeable in the area than I am that will, you know, tell me I'm talking shit. But anyway, never mind about that, we move on. Oh, career mode, career mode, career mode, career mode. Now, if you're new here, which I imagine some are, um, career mode is the thing I've always loved about FIFA the most. Ever since I started playing FIFA, that was my main mode back when it was manager mode, of course. And it still remains to be the case to this day. And um, obviously, as I said already in this video, it has been kind of left uh, in the last few years to kind of to rust. And FIFA 19 is no different, apparently. If they really think Champions League is a feature, which is a video I've always already, is a topic, sorry, I've already talked about in a video. Um, they can really go and fuck themselves. However, we might as well talk about it. Obviously, there was still entertainment there, but it just it doesn't last. And every year, the amount of time I can spend on career mode dwindles. And um, I probably stopped playing it months ago if it wasn't for the Sunderland career mode that I started for the channel, um, which made me kind of fall in love with it a little bit again. However, that wasn't necessarily the FIFA rating career mode. That was just the sort of storyline that I was following. Um, however, there was one major thing, well, a major, I mean, you can't see me, but imagine the bunny ears, sarcastic comments, uh, like speech marks. Um, there was a new feature in, in FIFA 18 career mode, which we're not getting in FIFA 19, so we might as well be fucking grateful. Transfer negotiations, a cutscene, yay! Um, <clears throat> this was the new feature, it was the... Re redesign of the transfer negotiation system. Um, what you're seeing at the moment in the background is actually a contract negotiation, but you've done the same with transfers, you talk to clubs, um, you talk with another representation or the uh, representative, I should say, or the manager of the other club, and you decide on a fee and then go and talk to the player and the agent about the wages and the bonuses and things like that. Now, cutscenes are kind of been something people have been asking for for a little while, but more so press conferences which have no real purpose in the game whatsoever um, not like they want to do that apparently by the looks of it no, well done well done EA um, so this was their answer obviously we started getting cutscenes with the journey and that kind of made it more like okay when are we getting these in career mode this is the cutscenes we got um, and they're alright they're alright new feature however the main problem with them is after three or four goes on the release day you're just fed up with them and you just skip them. Um, 
I skip them all the time now. I never listen. I, why wouldn't I? I've seen it hundreds of times, and um, it just wasn't isn't worth the time. It's not worth the hassle. And it's, is it really necessary in game? When I did my video that went through FIFA 14 to FIFA 8, uh, 18 career modes, just looking at the features and the menus and things like that, one thing that kind of became apparent to me is actually I I I prefer the old way. I prefer just you know approaching to buy. Having like the sort of the A4 paper and setting out a, pr a, a price and then sending it off, um, and I actually do prefer that way. Uh, I think it's it's just far too drawn out. Um, I remember on the FIFA 18 beta, which they actually invited me to, not that they wanted to see FIFA 19 again. Thank you EA, fuck you. Um, I remember there wasn't even an option to skip. And I'm hoping that got added because of the feedback in the beta, to be honest, but it took forever and ever. Not only was it, you know, quite drawn out in what they were saying, but the time in which the cutscene would last before moving on would be a lot longer than what the actual sentence was. You could read it in about three seconds, but the cutscene would keep going for about seven or eight. So it really got drawn out really quickly, and like I say, after three or four times on opening on the release day, you're just fed up with it and you want to stop it. Um, and as that's the only major feature, it's kind of that's quite quite bad, really. That's their main thing, and yet it's quite tedious. Um, that's not very good, and I'm sure they care like so much. Of course, I fucking don't. Um, but that was literally all they had to offer for career mode training. Same, the way you get youth players. Same, press conferences still pointless. Um, Conversations with players, still a lot less than they used to be. Uh, and yep, that's about it. Oh, and they took out the ability to request funds, which was what's the point? That took that that took some time. That whether it was only five to ten minutes, that still took time. Some they asked someone, they thought they were going around the office, and they thought, "Yo, Jeff, can you just quickly take out the request funds option? Why? No reason. No reason. Oh, okay." I just want to know what that conversation was. Seriously, what was the fucking point? It's such a small thing, but equally, it's a small thing. Just leave it. It was useful. Just fucking leave it. Especially now you've got the finances, and you're seeing, oh, look, the club are making hundreds of millions, but I've only got two million in my transfer budget. Oh, I'll ask the fans. I'll wait. As you can see, there's. A, I'm very. I've already made like four videos ranting about this sort of thing, so I, I, I won't rant any further, but career mode on FIFA 18 was lackluster. Just like it was in FIFA 17, FIFA 16 we added new things, but it, again they weren't. There, there wasn't much longevity to them. And FIFA 15, FIFA 14 before that, FIFA 18 career mode was a dud, and FIFA 19 career mode is going to be another dud. So positivity. Um, anyway, sadly that's about it for career mode. So much potential. My final, my final words in this is so much potential for the mode. Please, EA, for fuck's sake, FIFA 20, don't mess it up, or uh, a lot of people are going to give up. People are giving up already with FIFA 19, more people are going to give up with FIFA 20. If there's some plan to make people go on the ultimate team because it makes you more money, it's not going to work. Most people just stop playing your fucking game and go to PES because at least they try, even though their gameplay is a bit clunky. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's move on. Um, it doesn't get much better, really, does it? The, in the rest of the game. Oh, pro clubs. So obviously in the eyes of the people that actually play the game, pro clubs is a major mode. It's the primary online mode. It's the primary mode you play with your mates. It's the most fun. And um, obviously that's to only the players because EA clearly see it as absolute trash and a waste of space. Um, I can't even remember which FIFA they last added something to pro clubs in. I'm sure the people that are fans of pro clubs can tell you specifically the last FIFA that they actually got something worth talking about in because they're probably counting down the days to the next one and they've probably reached like over six years now. Um, the fact that a major mode like Pro Clubs is being <laughs> even added into the rest of the game section of this video says a lot. There's really nothing to talk about with Pro Clubs. It was yet again left to rot. Um, like I said, I can't think of anything meaningful for years. And yet again, similar with career mode in FIFA 19, Pro Clubs is getting nothing. And 
uh, a lot of this game, FIFA 19 I'm talking about, is looking towards Champions League being the main feature. That means content for the Ultimate Team, content for Career Mode, content in the kickoff. But what's Pro Clubs getting from that? Is there really anything that Pro Clubs can get from that? Um, Look, if there if there's aesthetic things that might change in, in Pro Clubs, maybe you've got an option to play through something like Champions League style tournament. I don't know, but it's nothing major. It's nothing worth talking about. And in fact, I don't think they've done anything related to uh, Champions League in the Pro Clubs. I think Pro Clubs is literally exactly the same. It had a beta. What's the point in having a beta for something that's exactly the same? You got all the info from last year's beta or the year before that. Um, Pro Clubs is. Again, with them being so big on esports, it's the primary online mode. That's just where they're going to get success at esports, not playing fucking ultimate team shit or having individuals playing each other. Pro clubs is where it's at, where it could be a proper team sport. You've got teams joining the esports. Why is pro clubs not being touched upon? It can be so good for esports. I don't understand what they're thinking, um, other than the fact it doesn't make them money, and that's literally all, all there is to it. So, um, Again, FIFA 20 is probably the last hope for pro clubs before people get a bit pissy. I don't know if PES have an equivalent, but you'd think if PES can, as much as they've got a licensing issue, um, I know you can customise on PS4 and PC, but I feel like if they went and developed and spent a lot of time on a mode like that next year and FIFA once again left pro clubs just to die, um, PES could make real like gains in that area. However, sadly, that's all I've got in pro clubs. Um, it's a shame, and yet again, FIFA 18 tre- treated it like shit. I don't really know why I'm focusing on the rest of the game. Um, again, nothing really happened. Kickoff is kickoff. FIFA 19, they're making that a big deal for no reason whatsoever. Um, you still got a few tournaments. Did you know women's tournaments still in FIFA? I know, it's shocking. I mean, you remember when they milked that in FIFA 16? Or yeah, FIFA 16, and they were like, "Oh, look, we're putting women's football in the game. Look at us, we're pioneers. Give us, give us compliments. Come on, everyone, let's feed ourselves a steam." Uh, that's still in the game. It just hasn't been touched since then, and um, isn't really given any time of day on the menu. A number of people were like, "Oh, maybe they'll start adding leagues. Maybe they'll add more international teams as we go along." This is a really good thing for uh, women's football. No, it was just EA looking for publicity. Um, yep, career, like I say, for some reason FIFA 19, this sec- if we did a video for like FIFA 19 this time next year, this section will have a lot to talk about because kickoff's getting loads of new shit and again I just find it completely pointless, kickoff's only there for when you're playing with your mates, um, so it, it did its job on FIFA 18, um, yep, that's pretty much it for, for, for that. <laughs> Pro Clubs and Vessel of Modes, everyone. Before we go into the conclusion section, I just thought I'd touch on gameplay a little bit. In my opinion, when the game came out, the gameplay was actually the best it's been in terms of entertainment since FIFA 15. Now, if you remember FIFA 15, attacking was so much fun because wingers were OP and defences were shit, and goalkeepers were as well. Um, FIFA 18 was actually very entertaining to play, and I actually went. This is only when it came out, by the way. I actually found it really entertaining to play, I thought there were goals in it, I thought it was quite fun, um, but they went and patched it and ruined it and made it very similar to FIFA 16 and 17 before it. Um, FIFA 16, keeping the ball was incredibly difficult because for some reason the AI would have this sort of basically one tapping the ball around the middle of the park was their crack. Uh, FIFA 17 games were just fairly dull, it was. It just seemed like most games would end 1-0 or there wouldn't be much in it. Um, defences were certainly better than attackers. Um, FIFA 18, like I said, at the start of the game I felt like that was different, I felt like it was more entertaining, they went and patched it and we went again into similar sort of issues where games were quite difficult, defences were better than attacks. Um, which isn't evident by the fact I've got a 6-0 gameplay in the background so I'm making myself look stupid there. Um, but yeah, it was. It, it, I felt like they had it relatively okay. They needed to tweak a few things. Obviously, it was a little bit too OP. I feel like for attacking players, but it's the first time I really noticed wingers being actually quick. And I feel like they should be. I feel like I don't know why they seem to have this weird thing about having wingers quicker than centre backs these days. Considering 
Wings are often quicker than centre backs. That's not difficult to bring in. Um, I do notice it more and more since that patch went in. Players with 80 odd pace would still be caught by players with 50, 60. Um, so hopefully I haven't tried it yet. Obviously I didn't have the beta as I alluded to earlier. But the demo comes out. Hopefully the gameplay is at least okay. I haven't really heard too many good things yet. But I'm hoping that there's people unleashing anger because of the game mode situation more than anything. So um, hopefully gameplay gets better. But on FIFA 18, it started off okay and then went to shit. Um, so yeah, there's gameplay. Overall, FIFA 18 isn't the worst FIFA in my opinion. FIFA 16 will always hold a bit of hatred in my heart. The only good thing about FIFA 16 was they added the uh, church of football, that is Fratton Park. That is it. Um, FIFA 18 wasn't that bad. It was certainly had more fun moments than that game for me. However, it was very much it was lackluster. And as I said at the start, as much as it's not really a word, <laughs> meh is like <laughs> it's such a good word to describe it. It's such a meh game. It's if you know what I mean. It's such a uh, it just doesn't get you excited. Um, presentation things like that they're always going to nail. I'm not going to. Slag. I'm, I'm going to give them credit where it's due. Presentation is always good, but we've come to expect that over the years. So to praise them on that is kind of pointless. They already have it. Why would they change it? Um, Gameplay is not as good as it could be. Game modes haven't been improved as much as they could be, and that probably has something to do with the journey, and less so the ultimate team uh, as well. So hopefully, one day. Things like career mode and pro clubs will get the justice they deserve because on FIFA 18 they certainly didn't. It had some fun moments. I enjoyed playing the game. Like I say, it did die for me, but it, but my son's in career mode, which I might as well plug right now. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Has made me a little bit more sort of lot enjoy the game a little bit more. However, at this moment in time, I don't really want to go on it other than to get gameplay for videos such as in the background here um, I thought I'd just leave some, the menu of career mode just to show how little has changed from like FIFA 16 FIFA 17 anyway FIFA 18 is done pretty much after a couple of weeks it shall now be laid to rest thank fuck um, leave your thoughts on FIFA 18 down below is it the worst for FIFA ever do you actually enjoy it if you're new around here be sure to subscribe like if you enjoyed or agreed with any of my points that I made would be appreciated Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video, goodbye.